Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am so excited to be here with April Franks. April, how are you? I am fantastic, Rasavi. And let people. Me, let me just tell you, I know that we're going to have a great conversation because anytime I get on an interview, I think about the person, I think about their vibe, and I I always ask myself, like, is this going to be a conversation where I'm going to have to heavy lift? You know, sometimes you're in a conversation with someone and they're just not being real with you. They're not being honest with you. And you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah. This is a lot of work. So I just, I'm, I'm already entering this conversation knowing we are going to talk about a lot of things. Yes, girl. Talk- I'm going to carry my own ass. Okay. You won't have to. Thank you so much. I have, I have, uh, I have no problem carrying your ass. It is a beautiful one. <laughs> okay. So instead of asking the question, April, like, who are you? You know, tell my audience about who you are. And there's nothing wrong with that question because it's the Say It Out Loud podcast. And I want my audience to really get into the heads of the people and the minds and the hearts of the people that come on here. I want to ask you a different question. And you can, uh, you can, um, you can process this in any way you want. And there's no right or wrong answer to this. But what is something in your previous life that you used to say out loud? And let me let me elaborate. What is something in your previous life? How did you used to think in your previous life? And how did that affect the things that you used to say out loud? And there's going to be a transition to this question. So I'd love to hear about who the April was before. Instead of the person just sitting right here in front of me, who was that April? What was the stuff that she was? Yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only to other people, but to herself. Who sure. Was she? Yeah. So April. 1.0 got it was uh, by any means necessary a hustler a midnight oil burner a proponent of rise and grind a proponent of toxic masculinity a proponent of pushing through and processing later yeah that's who i was And as a result of you being that hustler and really having that narrative in your mind, right? And this is what I want everyone to hear is that what you're, so April, you're such a, thank you for your transparency. You're, you're messaging back in the day as a business coach and you run a seven figure business. Okay. And you're helping so many women doing that today. And you've been doing that for years. It's, it's just, I love that you said April 1.0, because that's just one version of who you used to be. You used to tell yourself that it was, it was good to hustle and rise and grind. And you were, and you were a proponent of toxic masculinity. And so the things that you were putting out into the world represented that. They did. I know. And I had to apologize to my audience too. I really, I, first of all, thank you for saying that. Not a lot of people have, you know, the ability to really push aside their pride and just say, hey, guess what? I was wrong all these years. I well, really it's not, it's, it's, and it's not that I was wrong. I was operating from the vantage point that I knew. Yeah. And, and then I grew. And then now I get to choose to operate from a different vantage point. I wasn't wrong. It's just, I'm just not aligned with it anymore. And I don't think that the people that are still, on that are wrong if it works for them yeah if it actually works for them for me it didn't it ran me into a divorce into you know fibroid tumors a hysterectomy at the age of like 30 something you know some uh, uh angst with my daughter i mean it just so it just wasn't it just wasn't good for me and it wasn't authentic really to the woman in me Yeah. So yes, I I, I'd like to retract my statement, Your Honor. Uh, So it wasn't that it was wrong. It was it it worked for you at the time. Yeah. Until it no longer worked for you. It 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 really wasn't working. Okay. It just was. It I was just getting results. So I think there's a there's a a little slight distinction there, right? It's like it wasn't that I wasn't getting results. I was getting results, Mm -hmm. and we were getting results and excelling every year. And we have every year. We have we have never stayed the same. We have excelled every year. Mm-hmm. but it wasn't working. <laughs> the numbers was moving up, but it wasn't, I mean, you can't be like, oh yeah, that was working, but you, you destroyed your family. So you know I, what I'm- I was just going to ask you because oftentimes we look to the outside to see if something's not working. And for you, mm-hmm. your outside was pretty much working. You were, you were rising in numbers every year. So mm-hmm. my question to you is how did you know it wasn't working for you internally. How did that show up in your life? Oh, because my family was unhappy. 
Wow. So that was like, you, you could just tell because you're family. I mean, yeah. I mean, fuck. I mean, I mean, any woman knows that you're fucking, your kid is unhappy. Your husband is unhappy because you're dedicating you because you are cheating with your business all the time, every day. And for 16, 18 hours, I mean, that's the biggest evidence. Um, and then I was exhausted. I could, you can, you can, I couldn't get enough sleep. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't get enough sleep. So that, you know, and that's how I know the difference between when people say, are you tired? And sometimes I'll make the distinction. I'll be like, you know, I'm exhausted. Exhaustion is internal. Exhaustion isn't resolved by sleep. Exhaustion is resolved by self-care. Mm. Sleep, if you're tired, you can get some sleep and then you wake up and you ain't tired no more. <laughs> when you're exhausted, that is like spiritually exhausted. You're it's like, a tired. state, right? Yeah. It's Exhaustion is a state. You wake up and your ass is still exhausted. Mm -hmm even though you slept for 10 hours, but yes. you wake up and you feel like, oh, damn, I need to go back to sleep. That's that heaviness that you feel. That's like, yes. that weighs you down. So my next question that I'd love to ask you is, what are you, what are you currently saying out loud? I have so much to say about what you're currently saying out loud. All the stuff that you're putting out there, you and your beachwear, for all of you, like you, you need to go follow April. April, uh, what are you on Instagram? You're just April Franks, right? Epic. Epic April. Epic April. Oh my God. Every time I watch your stuff, like the, the messaging that you're putting out there is so opposite of what you used to put out there. And I love it because you are such an inspiration to so many people who are also, you know, have, are, are burned out from that hustle culture. And so you're giving people permission to go live their best lives, live their best. Li oh, hello. We're taking a photo now. <laughs> yes. Living our best lives with Vasavi and April. <laughs> um, sorry, say it out loud, podcast. sorry to everyone listening we just had to have a selfie moment we had to do that but what i'd love to know is so like if, if you're messaging back then and what you were saying out loud was hustle rise and grind what is the messaging now what is it now that you're saying out loud peace pleasure profits mm -hmm. all of it your intuition your womanhood feeling yourself, mm -hmm. honoring yourself, boundaries, happiness, joy, fun, playfulness. Mm -hmm. Like it's so important. Listen, I have a, listen, I'm not in love with a stripper, but I certainly had sex with one last night. And let me tell you something. Life is really to be enjoyed. I think people are so over their own lives. They're just waiting to die. Like they're just waiting like just the hamster wheel. I'm going to get up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick up the kid. I'm going to help the homework. I'm going to give a bath. I'm going to eat some food. I might spend time with a loved one. I'm going to try to work on my business. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get up. I'm going to repeat the same cycle-ish, right? Everybody has their variation of that. And then there's no playfulness. There's no joy. There's no happiness. There's no friends, you know, and that is important to me. And, and more important than money, ladies and gentlemen, listening to this podcast is blissfulness, is a state of joy and fulfillment. And that's the most important thing. And the mechanism based on the lifestyle we want to live, Vasavi, I believe is the business. And that's where I get to come in and help people build their audience, launch their products and services and those things. But we're not doing it just for the business. We're doing it because we want to live differently. We want to make impact differently. And so that's why where the messaging has changed. I just am super honest and transparent about life. I always have been, even when I was version 1.0, mm -hmm. this is just me evolving. And I, this is like version uh, 2.78, <laughs> you know, uh, going on version 3.0 and just be honest, yo, this shit is challenging and difficult and life is always happening and shit's always happening. And we don't always have all the right answers and that's okay too. I want to share this with you. We were not um, really close back then. Like we knew who each other, we who each other were, but, and we've recently reconnected. I got to spend Thanksgiving with you and be with you and, 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 you know, meet your clients and meet your family. Um, and recently I've just, I, I, I pay a lot of attention to how I feel when I'm around people um, because I haven't always done that. And so I've always like stayed longer in relationships than I really should. You know, I've stayed in relationships, even if they were like, hella abusive or just awful because I was just, it was painfully comfortable. 
for me to be in those. Like, it, 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 even though it sucked, I was like, oh, but I'm used to this. I'm used to being treated like shit just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so I, what I want to say about you is I've been paying a lot of attention to how I feel when I'm around people. And I wrote this down. April, you are always someone I feel okay with. And what I mean is that, like, no matter if I'm, if I'm in my shit or if I just want to celebrate, I feel like no matter what state I'm in, I could be in a very highly elevated state. I could be excitable. I could be, the, you know, you know, very theatrical. Or if I just want to cry, like who you are uh, is someone that I'm like, no matter who I am, April's going to be okay with all of me. And like, that's the beauty of you shifting those thoughts, changing those thought patterns, saying it out loud, always being honest and doing that internal work that I know you teach so many of your clients. It's not just about the marketing, the content, the scaling, it's who you're being as you're building it. And so I just wanted to take this moment to acknowledge that. Oh, thank you. I, I, I always say that to Allison too, our mutual friend, Allison Bird. Yeah. Both of y'all are people that like, I don't feel like I ever have to turn up. Perform perform period i was going to say turn up the volume turn down the volume i don't need to perform um and i and i i mean that is a testament to me like the the, how blissful you are on the inside right yeah i feel that i don't i feel that i you know somebody because um people love my energy and i i really do have good energy and beautiful energy it's thank you it's like an infection it's it's a good it's a it's a something and What I realized is that people were like, I don't know what it is. And I said, let me tell you what it is. Let me help you. Let me tell you what it is about me that people are so drawn to because other people often are like, why y'all love April? Like, why y'all come for her so hard? She ain't even got the best website. (laughs) It doesn't matter. So (laughs) it doesn't. Here's, Here's why. It's because people feel loved in my presence. They feel accepted and seen. And that will beat your fucking funnel every day of the week Mm -hmm. because they feel loved in my presence and people and women especially feel like they can be themselves and men too, that they can be themselves and nobody cares. And I'm super myself and accepting and I am love. Like I am period. And so that's what it is. So people question, they're like, how are you friends with April? And she's so this or that. I'm like, you How are have, you not? How are you I, not? I know. Yeah. You missed the boat. What's um, wrong with you that you don't like me? I, my father always used to say that if like people didn't like my, my father, my father is the kindest man. He goes, if someone doesn't like me, that's what's wrong with them. I question yeah. your sanity. Why don't you? Yeah. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm good. I, and, and so I, I want to ask you this. Was this always the case? Was it always the case that people felt loved in your presence? Or is this a result of your own internal work and who you and who you've become? I think people have always felt seen in my presence. I don't know that they always felt loved in my presence. What do you think? I certainly is like, how do do you know? Yeah, I mean, seeing like that I acknowledge their existence, but I might have been a bitch in my delivery in the acknowledgement or it might have been harsh or super masculine where now my delivery is a little more. You're very loving. You're very loving. And what I love about that is because I, I, I relate to having and leading with a lot more masculine energy. And as I'm about to be 40 and I know you, you've crossed this bridge already, but I, I'm having a little bit of an existential crisis these days. And I'm like, who do I really want to be in my forties? And I realized a part of myself that I've, you know, locked away is my heart. I'm actually a very loving person. And you, I think maybe you've seen a loving side, but I reserve that right. Um, behind closed doors. I don't show publicly this very soft, sappy ass side of me because that feels too scary. But I've been showing that side more because isn't that the part of life is that we heal these parts of ourselves and we integrate it so that we can fully show up as our full selves with people. Are there are there parts of yourself that you've specifically focused on healing so that you can be the person that you are today? And if so, what are they? Well, first of all, thank you for just sharing that. That was beautiful. And that's what this whole thing is about life, just growing. And for me, I would say I focus on loving myself and accepting myself and acknowledging like through the work that I've done in a former life, I was a queen and I really recognize that one day. 
And it just came to me that this must have been my assignment. Mm -hmm. And so then it shifted how I showed up online and just how I show up in life. And I've just, everything just isn't that deep. Everything isn't that serious. Everything, you know, I, my mom used to say, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Like everything isn't a catastrophe, you know? And so because I've, I've, I've now learned that I'm just like, I, I'm just more relaxed. Like just everybody calm the fuck down, you know? What was there a period in your life where you used to make mountains out of molehills? I mean, I think I used to be stressed out, right? And now things, I process things differently. My my perception of the world is different. My perception of life and my purpose here is different. So the things that used to bother me, they don't. You know, I don't have road rage. I don't yell at people. I don't curse people out unless it's highly necessary. You know, I don't, there's just so many things that I used to do that I just don't do anymore because it's just not needed. Like it just doesn't get the energy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I can be so energetic and be so loving in so many different spaces is because I'm not expelling unnecessarily. You want to know something? I, I, I got this person's email yesterday and she talked about how laziness is her superpower. And I really felt seen in that moment. But I'm like the laziest person you will ever meet. You have no idea. Like, I don't like to lift a finger. But the what she wrote in the email was, my laziness is my superpower because it's my superpower because I always um, find the most efficient shortcut. And I'm like, what a beautiful way of looking at what we perceive in society as a flaw right? Being yeah, lazy. And for sure. what, what I love about you is that even the, even right now on your Instagram, what you're putting out right now in terms of like content, even taking people behind the scenes, the way you're going about doing it, it feels so aligned with who you are. It doesn't feel like there's this whole other persona. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're a walking embodiment. So I'd love to, yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you, like your process, the way you approach working with women on building profitable businesses, but not being burnt out in the process. Like, and I'm gonna say one more thing. I want everyone listening to this, to hear this, okay? Everyone that I bring on the show has their set of practices, rituals, routines that they use. Take what you like, leave the rest. And I'm gonna challenge you if there's something that April or any of my guests are saying like, oh, this has worked for me, before you just go ahead and resist it, also just be open to it. Right, because we never know the thing that's gonna make that spark inside of us. Like, ooh, this is opening me up. So what is your approach, your process? Like when you're sitting down with the client or you're teaching, like how do you begin that process? What do you say out loud to your clients as you're working with them? What do you want? <laughs> how did I know? I, I just did like a 30 second, no, I did like a two minute preface to that question. <laughs> that's it, what do you want? What do you want? Okay. And, and don't lie. And don't lie. That's that's great. Dot dot dot. And don't lie. And don't lie. What do you want? What have you been repressing? And it's interesting. Uh, this woman named Alexis Logan. I worked with her for a while, and she did some soul readings for me when I was going through a very tumultuous time with the when I was married and I had a lover at the same time, and she kept asking me, what would I want? And I didn't want to answer her because it would make me responsible for the answer, for the outcome of the wanting. Wow. And I wasn't ready to be responsible. That hit me really hard just now. Because answering the question would have meant I was failing at being married and that I was going to let down others and that I was going to have to divorce and leave my good man husband who has done nothing wrong you know, and who does that? And, um, and I got married late, late-ish, right? A lot of people get married in their twenties. I got married at 30 something. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I asked my clients that, what do you want? Let's set the intention. So we have these energy zones in our biz and our brand and everything is based on the energy zone. The first one is woman. The second one is intuition. And so we always start with the woman and what she's feeling. And then we go into, stage community blah 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 launching you know ha, you know alignment those things but you can't be in alignment or, or reach a state of bliss if you because bliss is 
Um, one of the energy zones, you can't do any of that if you don't know who you are and you're not listening to yourself and honoring what's coming up for you. What what did you have to, not have to, what did you decide that you wanted in order to make this switch from the way you were living to the way you're currently living? And I know it's an everyday choosing and deciding every day to, to continue to choose yourself and honor your desires, but what did you realize you needed to be responsible for? In your life. I need to be responsible just for my truth and how I was living. Like, I don't, I didn't know that I wanted to be married. I enjoy multiple partners. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if, I don't even know if I'm straight. I like, I think I'm pansexual. Like I like everybody. Um, so, you know, there's like so many layers to me. So I didn't really know. Um, and I was, so I was putting, I put myself in a traditional box mm -hmm. and I was trying to do what the American dream said. And it said that you should do this. And I was like, but but I also, I like this, but also like this. So what is that exactly? And then what, and then what yeah. if you didn't have to choose, right? And that's what I love about how you're living and how you're Exactly. Because yeah. I want it all, literally. It's so interesting. Okay, let me tell you the story. Do we have time for a quick story? We have plenty of time. Okay, so I was seeing, um, I really wasn't seeing a guy. I mean, I was just having sex with him. So we can call that um, adulting. So I was adulting with a guy. And we adulted for a little, for just, you know, a little while. And then we stopped adulting for a series, a long time, like six months. And then I ran into him again and we had, and we adulted again. But in the midst of that adulting, I ran into, I, I, when I saw him again, it was with him and a friend and I wanted to adult with a friend. So I told the first person, I said, listen, I enjoy you and all the things. Well, he had first initiated with me and he said, I noticed that there are some energies between you and my friend. And I just want you to let you know that there's no problem if that's the direction you want to move in. And this is after he and I had started adulting again. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, I said, I just wanted to, I appreciate you. I said, you're right. I do want to explore that. And, um, and so I'm just, I just want to be transparent with you and let you know. And then when I did reach out to the friend, the friend was re receptive to the adulting possibilities. Mm -hmm. And we also had a con a open dialogue about the thing. Like there was no going around anyone's back. And that's really how I am. Like, even when I was, even when I had a boyfriend, when I was married, I told my ex-husband, I was like, I am seeing someone. And he asked me, he said, do you want a divorce? And I was like, well, no, not really. And he was like, well, so are you going to stop seeing the person? I said, no. He was like, well, why are you telling me? I said, because it's happening and I'm not a liar. Like integrity is really important to me. And I feel like you should know. He was like, well, so <laughs> I was like, I don't know. But what I do know is this is the truth. Mm -hmm. And we can make decisions based on this truth. Mm -hmm. And I have to be true to me. I am not going to die for another person. Even though I made a commitment, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. And then how long, and then when, when you told him that, what, how did he, like, what, what ended up happening in your marriage? Obviously. Oh, he was devastated. He was devastated. Yeah. Yeah. He was devastated. Um, which I had no control over and I'm not, and, and, and I knew that that would happen and it would probably happen on the other. I don't know if it would happen for me. Cause I don't, I'm not really that, I don't really trip out about sexual relations like that. Um, as long as there's integrity and there's ethical non-monogamy, which I'm a fan, fan of. And so, and we dealt with that and we were divorced um, two, two and a half years later. You know what I'm, I'm like, as I'm listening to talk about this, it's like, this is why I love having these conversations because we haven't talked really at all about your business and what you've accomplished in your business. And I'm like, this is so good because I always want to show the person behind the business because I think so many people want to get out there. They want to be putting out content. They want to be taking their experience, their wisdom, their knowledge. They want, I, I fundamentally, I fundamentally believe all human beings have a desire to help another human being. Stuff happens. Life doesn't always hand us the circumstances to do that. And it's up to us to create it. There are situations that are way beyond our control, but I fundamentally believe that every human being wants to serve. And what gets in the way is the, but what will people think? Or who do I need to be in order to be someone that you buy from or hire or whatever? Sure, sure. And so I just really appreciate that you, I'm just like, man, you're sharing 
stuff that is really personal, but you've made peace with it so you can share it. You know what I mean? And well, and I don't care what people think. So whoever's yeah. watching or listening, I mean, you don't live with me. I mean, fuck. Yeah. I mean. So like, I, I want everyone to really hear this. Like you can have a successful business. You don't have to lose sight of yourself. You don't have to be watered down. You can actually be yourself in business. Like, and you're just sharing your life with us and that's it. And with no attachment of, oh my God, what are YouTube viewers gonna think? What are you like, you don't, you're just sharing it. And so let me ask you this because I know so many people who listen to the Say It Out Loud podcast, they wanna have the courage to say it out loud. It's not always sure. easy. So what motivates you? No, it you? is easy. Well, it's, <laughs> it is easy. You know what, thank you for saying, you know what? Yeah, they're protecting. Yeah. And when they stop protecting and caring for the external validation, then they will be honest. The truth is always the truth. Here's the thing, Vasavi. Mm -hmm. The truth is always easy. The truth is the easiest. It's the fear of the offense that people are afraid of. People don't want to offend others. Oh my God, what will the Christians think? And the and the 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 Buddhists and the Catholic people and whatever. I don't give a fuck what any other groups think. Because at the end of the day, this is my life and I have to live it. And no one is going to bed with me at night except the people that I choose. Mm -hmm. And no one is supporting my mother or my daughter or my granddaughter who has autism. No one is coming here volunteering to work inside my business for nothing. Like, so no one is going to put this box of shit together that I need to call a task rabbit for. So it's like, this is my life and this is your life. And so as soon as people stop pretending for others, I just refuse to live that way. We don't have that much time left. I'm 45, about to be 46. I'll be damned if I walk around pretending for other people just so they can be okay with the fake version. No, no, yeah. <sighs> so there's that and we sip. Yeah. <laughs> And we said, I got no water left in my Yeti. Okay, I have one last question for you. I have one last question for you is, and you might not even answer it. What, okay. What, okay, what's something, you have an option. Okay. What's something that you haven't said out loud yet, but you're getting there, okay? Or what's something that you haven't said out loud yet and you wanna say it for the first time here on the podcast? Hmm, what's something that I haven't said out loud yet? Hmm. Well, something that, well, it's not that I want to, I could just tell it because it just happened. Listen, I had sex with a 28 year old last night and that man, he really made love to me. Like we knew each other well, and I'm so grateful for it. Like it was such an amazing experience. I was just like, what an old, amazing, soft soul that I attracted and said yes to and we got to share this time with, it was just, and I was so cut off guard and it was just such a needed energy. I was just like, yes, thank you. You know, and I'm just in this place in my life where I'm having lots of experiences, discovering who I am and what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy. And I am just so grateful for all the beings and the energies that have come in my, in my space that I've attracted. And yeah, that's what I could say out loud that, that my daughter's 27, she'll be 28 this year. And I looked at him and I was like, you are such a man to be so young. Like, I'm like, you, I, I, I'm almost mad. He's not 10 years older and more established. I was like, this is such a good situation, but yeah. I'm getting caught up. So <laughs> But I'm just saying, so I appreciate that because it was just like, hmm, okay. What was the needed energy that uh, you were you were looking for? You said uh, mm -hmm. it was much needed energy. What was that? Give me some of that because maybe I need some of that. And I don't even know that it fucking exists. Tell me. He took his time. Man. He took his time. He wasn't, he didn't write, it wasn't even stated that that, that was even going to happen. But he just took his time. He didn't, he was not in a rush at all. And yeah. when we were in the act, he even said it to me. He said, let me take my time. And I almost fucking lost it. 
And I was just like, thank you. Because it's interesting. I had a yoni massage uh, for the first time in February. And that's what I learned in that massage and that healing process and going through that with the guy, with the masseuse. And I said, what I learned was that men don't take their time. I said, I have been allowing men not to take their time with me. And the last couple of lovers that I've had have both taken their time. And so I have literally manifested. I'm so happy about it because I'm like, I've been living, I've been, oh, can we say fucking? (laughs) Yes, you can. You can say whatever you want on this podcast. I've been fucking my whole life since I was 14. Mm -hmm. And, And most women have been having sex at least for 10 or 20 years. And we have been allowing ourselves to be rushed I and so, feel you know way. what I'm saying? Like yeah, to be rushed. Yeah. It's just been felt like a, like, let's just get it done. It's just, yes. like feel yeah. And I've, and I've also just been okay with that because it's like, okay, well, I'm just happy that you'll, you know, spending some time. So I just, I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll give it to you. We'll do the things. We'll go through the, do, do, do. we'll do this. We'll do that. And he just took his time. And I was just like, and I, I'm, and cause that was my exact words. So for the massage guy, I was like, that's my lesson. Cause I shared it with a couple of friends. And then here I am manifesting men who are willing to take their time. How beautiful is that? Because sometimes we need someone else to show that energy to us, like to let us, to ignite that within us. Yeah. And what a beautiful gift, because now that you're like, you're swimming in, take your time energy. Like you can now take that energy and you can apply it into your own life. You know what I mean? So we need, we need that from other people. I listen. Other pe- yeah, other, other people's energy have an effect on us. So wh- I want to just say one last thing about you because I would love everyone to please just learn from you and and grow out loud with you. One of the things that you do, and I've 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 only really started to appreciate your content, um, April, in the past few months. I, I mean, I, I've appreciated it, but like I'm really yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you. Uh, okay, how do I say this? And I think I'm only appreciating it now as I enter into my 40s. When I watch your stuff, and I've said this to you, like you ignite the, like the regal in me. Like yes. I've always felt like a queen. In my last life, I've got a reading done in India. I was a queen in my last life in India. So I've always, I, yes, so I, like there's something so regal about how you carry yourself, which is a part of me that I think I've suppressed because I always thought if I, I would come off as arrogant. That's what it is. I thought, because I, I do feel very good about myself. I feel good about myself as a person. And I've often not shared that out loud because I don't want people to think I'm arrogant. That's so, number one. Okay. So number two, when I see you, I'm like, I don't look at you and think arrogance. I look at you and think, ah, celebration. I want that for myself. So that's the kind of content y'all you need to be absorbing is you need to be looking at someone who inspires that feeling in you that maybe you've suppressed and you're like, I want more of that. Like, and if you do look at people and you get jealous, realize that that is just misdirected admiration, right? It's like, if you're jealous of somebody, it's like, ooh, but what can I actually learn from this person? Well, who are they embodying that I'm not allowing myself to embody? So I just want to publicly say that because your stuff always makes me want to be, be, be more of me. Not even, yeah. I was, I was going to say be better, but I don't need to be better. I'm amazing. But it's yeah. like, be more of me. What would more of Vasavi look like? What would That's you know? so good. Yeah, so I just I, so I, good. So I, I wrote here, grow out loud. You grow out loud. There's none of the shit like, oh, my name is April. I have all my stuff together. I have all my shit together. Um, you know what? Like I, I'm I'm untouchable. You know what I mean? Like you grow out loud, and that is um that takes a lot of vulnerability to be able to do that. You yeah. know, because yeah. we're expected as women to just like we should just be packaged perfectly. Yeah, packaged perfectly. I want to speak on the arrogance part. Please, so here's ahead. the thing for everyone who ever feels that way. Mm-hmm. Ask yourself, are you arrogant? Let's start with there. So let's just stick to facts. Mm-hmm. Are you arrogant? No. So I'm not an arrogant person. I'm confident. Now, that, does, that doesn't mean that my pers- my that people are not perceiving my confidence as arrogance, but their perception is not my, is not within my control. Mm-hmm. So if you are, if you are arrogant, then that's something to address. But if you're not arrogant and people are perceiving you as such, that's not your issue. So for me, 
I'm sure there are people that think that they may think that I'm arrogant, but I give zero shits about that because I'm not actually an arrogant person. And I'm, I'm very confident. I love myself and I, I'm not going to act like I don't <laughs> because for fear that someone might think yeah. I'm arrogant. Yeah. I'm like, fuck it. I'm amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm oiled up today. I put on some extra body oil for Basavi. You know, I got all yeah. the... I wish so I, I could some... lay my head against your smooth. I have a, <laughs> I need skin to skin contact at all times. My Listen, hold me enough. Like I just want to lay my head in your. Oh cleaver. my god! Listen, and then okay, okay. Let's go back to the twenty eight year old. He That's is a skin to skin person. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Where are?" I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm trying to get close to you." He's like, "I'm trying to get closer." I was like, "What? How much closer can we get?" <laughs> That's funny. That's some shit I would say. This is what I feel like. What, wait, I'm already breathing your breath right now. What more do you want? I can smell your ears, which I love, but. So, but I just want to say that about the whole arrogance thing though. So like, let, just release that, right? We are moving into the space of just self-approval and it's just okay. Like, and if you truly believe, and I truly believe that I was a queen and am embodying that, the, the remnants of that, in today's existence, mm -hmm. then that's just how I'm going to carry myself. And, and, and I, I met a woman recently at a mastermind that I just joined. And the woman, I said, oh my God, you look so, I said, you look like a goddess. And she was like, but how can I, be? she was like, thank you so much. She was like, but how can I be a goddess? She said, I'm very fiery. I said, there is a goddess of everything, of water, of fire, of peace, of calm, there are, there, there are gods of all kinds. I said, so don't feel like you have to be the flowery butterfly version of a goddess or queen because you do not. That is a, that is a societal projection of false femininity. In the, in the Hindu religion, we have a goddess called Kali. Now she's not like, like our other goddesses who are sitting on a lotus flower and they have gold coins coming out and they're beautiful. Kali is what one, some would consider her very dark. She's ugly you know she has matted black hair she has a tongue sticking out but she's fierce she's the goddess that puts up with no shits she destroys anybody who is dark and evil and ignorant and so it's like yeah i think we i think we can all tap into that part of us as well for right? sure like, yeah for sure yeah for sure it's it's because you're right it's not just the the fairy version of of what you're envisioning no there's wrath as well yeah and wrath is and a there's thing yeah, and there's restraint, you know, and there's decorum. There's all the things, and I think people need to to really just honor that there's that we're so multidimensional, and yeah. I just noticed something about you that I wanted to acknowledge, and I, I've been doing this a lot of my interviews. Like I'll I'll tell my like if I have a moment of gratitude for my guest, I just need to say it to them because I don't want to wait till not like I want to say it to you in the moment. If I feel something, I want to say it to you. Um, as someone who has spent many years in therapy. I was in therapy when I was 12. I was consistently ther in therapy for 16 years till I was 28. What were you gonna say? Same, yes, same. in therapy at 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow, I had no idea. Oh my God, we have so much more in common. Okay, so- yeah, and it wasn't even me, it was my fucking parents. I'm like, y'all should be in therapy, but that's another episode. That's another episode about <laughs> how, how parents, uh, you know, they always have like a designated patient and it's usually the kid when it's actually the parent who needs help. What I, so what I appreciate about you, and I just learned this from you today, I just learned this from you today. So I have a tendency to, I can analyze a lot because I've spent a lot of time in my head understanding my past. I understand my childhood, how it's had an effect. And I can, I can come off as a little heavy. I'm just very serious. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty damn serious and I know that. But what I love about you is like, even when you were talking about being arrogant just now, and like we were making that discernment between that uh, distinction, even the way you talk about it was like, yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. We don't have to be that way anymore. Like we, we, you know, we, we can be like, you were just very light about it. So I appreciate that for me because I can go into a topic and go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you feel heavy. And then the, I, like coming out of it feels so exhausting, but I love how you were just like, yeah, we don't have to be that way anymore. I'm like, yeah, you're right. We don't have to be that way anymore. Okay, <laughs> right. okay cool. Let's go be that. Okay, let's be great then. Take it off. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because, and also being a, being a licensed therapist, I am used to absorbing that emotion from other yeah. people and I have it. And then it's often hard for me to process, which is why I jokingly say I'm the toxic therapist. Uh, but so I appreciate just the lightness that you bring to the heaviness, what can feel heavy. 
Yeah. And, you know, I have those moments. Thank you so much for that. I have those moments too, where I can definitely go in, into the depth of some things, but I also, what I've, what I've been learning and appreciating mm-hmm. is just some things are just simple. Mm-hmm. Like some things are just simple and it's us that overcomplicates it because we don't want to make the decisions. So then, so then we just got to go all into the, you know, and it's just like, you could just leave your husband <laughs> or you could just quit the job or you could just lose the weight or you could just, whatever the things are, you know, go to the dentist or fix your teeth or fix your eyelashes or whatever the hell your thing is. You could just, but it's like, we, sometimes we, sometimes we need that depending on how deep it is, you know, cause for some people that's enough and some people they need more depth. And I think and I think it all has its place. So yeah, that's good. I love how 45, wait, are you, are you, are you, are you 45 turning 46? Mm-hmm. I love how 45 looks on you. And I, I think I want to take some of that energy into my forties. I turn 40 yes. May 18th. I'm getting a party boat. We're doing a group spin class. I'm super excited. I'm doing a 40 day devotional towards one of my favorite Hindu gods. Oh um, yes. Yeah. 40 days of devotional prayer. So I want to bring your energy into my forties, which is like, what I get from you, April, is like, you've been there, you done that, you know yourself, you apply it. If something feels heavy, you choose for it not to be heavy, you move on. And that, yeah. and I appreciate you saying, cause like, yes, there were, it, there's a time and a place to go really, really deep. And that's one season of your life. My twenties was definitely that. My thirties were definitely that. Yeah. And I feel good now. I'm like, I know my shit. Let's go. Like, let's go yeah. live. I feel good. with it. Listen, something, I still have those days. Listen, I, I had a breakdown probably three weeks ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. man, this is just life. Shit is just the way it is. And we just need better tools to manage the shit that happens. Cause it's not like it's not happening, you know? Um, so there's, there's all kinds of, of, of things that are going on. We just, we are just now learning newer tools to use, to deal with the shit that we've always had to deal with as humans. And that's what's making the difference and making things, I think, a little lighter. There's, and we're open to more things now. You know, we're open to more therapy and more life coaching and more and, you know, different modalities of healing. And that is, I think, just impacting our world in like a major and amazing way. Well, you have an impact on many people who tune into your podcast, follow you on your Instagram. So can you let everyone know how they can hear your impactful words? Yes. Thank you, Vasavi, so much for having me on your show today. You can find me at Epic April on Instagram. There's a link in my link tree and you can peruse and find me. You can listen to podcasts, my podcast. You can listen to me on other people's podcasts. You can follow me on TikTok and other social media platforms. You can learn about working with me, about my live events. You can learn more about Epic Woman. But Instagram is probably the easiest place to go. And you just click that little link and go right there. So it's Epic April. And there's no extra E in April. It's A-P-R-I-L-L-E. And then also your podcast, Womanly Shit. Womanly Shit Podcast is on iTunes, honey. And it's on Spotify. Listen, we've been getting into it. It's Womanly Shit CEOs off the clock. So it's all the amazing women in industry like Vasa V, Allison Bird, Amy Porterfield, Brooke Castillo, Tanya Lee, Sunita Wells, um, Jamee Samuels. It's all of these amazing, powerful women. But it, we're talking and commentating about womanly matters that have nothing to do with work. So I'm excited to be on the show and be interviewed by you. And I'm it's, it feels very next level for me because I've never... It, I, you know, it, I'm going to, I'm going to admit this out loud and I'm going to, I've only recently, Say it out loud, Vasavi. I've only, this is something I've never shared. I've, I've only recently started to identify as a woman, not as a girl. Mm. Does that make sense? Like I've always mm. just thought of myself as a girl. Um, I, I don't, I've never said that out loud, but like the way I am with myself is I was still healing a lot of my teenage self, you know? Mm -hmm. So I finally, like, I just think it's, it's crazy what we bring into our lives. Like being on a podcast called Womanly Shit, like, obviously I know how we're going to get into it. It's going to be great. But I just think it's funny because I'm just starting to feel like a woman. Like, yeah, this is perfect timing. And here's what's great about the podcast. It's not an interview. You are my guest co-host and we commentate on submissions from guests about their shit and their life. Oh my God, I love that format. 
Yeah. I'm like, I have, I cannot wait. I, you told me this, I think, I think it's just kind of like, I just flew over my head. I'm so. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. Cause we never know what people, I mean, listen, we have had all the submissions of uh, all kinds of scenarios. (laughs) So that's what keeps it exciting. And every show is so different because of it. Oh my God, April, I'm so excited to be on. Um, You're a beautiful human being. Thank you for taking your time and uh, spending today on the Say It Out Loud podcast. Well, thank you. You attract beautiful beings because you are one as well. Love you. Love you too.